Okay, section one is going to be on shove math. I feel as though this equation that I'm using requires a little bit of a disclaimer, simply because while this is a very quick way to figure out your chip equity by hand, it is somewhat inaccurate as it doesn't really account for multiple callers, although you can use a variation of it to do so. Also, this is how I personally learned how to figure out CEV, and there are multiple ways to do so. Uh, so if you don't really like this equation, you can try to find something else that works better for you, but I've found this one to be very simple and easy to teach my students and explain well. So the equation is fold equity plus called equity equals hand equity, where fold equity is the percent everyone folds times the blinds and annies. Pretty simple and straightforward. Called equity gets a little bit more complex here. The very first section of it, we need to figure out what we can gain, which is our stack plus the blinds and annies. And then we have to figure out how much we actually gain long run because of it. So we multiply it by our equity versus the range that calls us. Now the second little section of it, we figure out what we can lose, which is our stack times villain's equity, how their range does against our hand, and then we do that little subtraction there. And then we take that overall number and we multiply it by the percent that we called overall. The reason why we need to do that is because generally the majority of time, or close enough to it, only the fold equity section is going to occur. So in order to weight the call equity section properly, you have to actually multiply it by, by the percent we end up getting called overall. And then we just put it together, and this is the answer we get in chip equity from the equation. To figure out fold equity, it's a two-step process. The first step, we need to look at the factors of the hand. Those factors include how many big blinds deep effective are we? What do the blinds and antes equal up to? How many people are there left to act? And then estimate the calling ranges for each villain. The second part, we need to figure out how often everybody folds. To estimate the percent everyone folds, you take the individual percentage of each person folding and multiply it through. Okay, now we are going to use a real hand example to figure out how much fold equity we have in a situation. Uh, the situation we are looking at, we have queen 10 off deep in the hot 44. This is with around 18 people left or so. We are 15 big blinds effective with the blinds and annies totaling 36,750. Because we are deep in a large field great value tournament, I would expect the players left act behind to have somewhat tight calling ranges for this large of a shove in this specific situation. So I would give the button a calling range of around this, which is sixes plus, king queen suited, and ace ten plus. I would give the small blind a slightly wider range of fives plus, king queen suited, ace nine suited plus, and ace ten off plus. And then I would give the big blind slightly wider range of around 14% being fours plus, king 10 suited, king jack off, ace nine off plus, and ace eight suited plus. So as you can see, situation, 15 big blinds effective, blinds and annies equals 36,750 with three people left to act. Um, put in the ranges. So if button is calling us 9.2%, this means button folds 90.8%. So small blind folds 90% and big blind folds 86%. So if you multiply it through, everyone folds overall, 70.3%. Okay, now let's look at the called equity part of this equation. For the first step, we have to look at what we can gain. Generally, what we can gain is our stack plus blinds and annies. Although, in cases which there are stacks 
uh, multiple stacks shorter than us, we can try to take the average of the stacks behind to figure out what we can gain and risk in general. 